we like to call it the supernatural hour. And now, our hosts. Antietam, as we know, that was a pretty major battle. That's one of those names that when you say Civil War, and you name like the top five places, that would probably be in my top five. This is what I think is interesting. There's a road there called Bloody Lane, which is the centerpiece of the Civil War's bloodiest day of battle, which was September 17th in 1862. It's near Sharpsburg, Maryland. And it says, even the U.S. Department of Transportation has declared this haunted. Wow. Really? So, yeah, you've got a government entity that's like, yep, haunted. So, I was like, now I need to go there. Apparently, 23,000 men were wounded or killed by the end of that day. And people that go there, and apparently the U.S. Department of Transportation, says that the lane is always church quiet. No, like kind of like we were talking about earlier. No matter how many people are there, you know, around visiting, you go down the lane and it's just real quiet and reverent like a cathedral. Um, visitors claim to hear phantom gunfire, smell gunpowder. They report seeing Confederate soldiers who seem to be reenactors, but then... They just are not there all of a sudden. That bet. <laughs> and then one of the most famous sightings was some schoolboys were there and they heard some singing that sounded like a Christmas carol. You know, they, you know, what's this Christmas singing? And they, they're like, it's not Christmas time. After questioning and, and doing some research, it was actually a Gaelic battle cry. And I don't speak Gaelic. So if you do and you're listening, and I butcher this, I'm sorry, but it looks like fa a bala. I was about to say good luck. <laughs> Gaelic, Welsh, all of those languages are yes, so kind of difficult like, to speak. Like we have a whole bucket of extra vowels here. Let's throw them in. <laughs> so fa a bala, or it means clear the way. Okay. So I thought that was kind of cool. I'm surprised it's that short in Gaelic because when I was in Ireland and I saw some of the English words and then the Gaelic Irish translation, it was like seven times longer. Oh, I know. So when I was in Wales, we stopped in the bathroom and it said no smoking, two words. And then the Gaelic was like a paragraph. So you did pretty good. Yeah. I mean, I don't speak Gaelic, but I'm going to go. Yeah. So what would you say? Fa, a. Fa, a, bala, probably. <laughs> or faf a bala. Both a bluff. I don't know. Let's just <laughs> let's we, go with the first one. <laughs> we should have hit Google Translate. <laughs> that might have been scary. <laughs> Fort Monroe, which is in Hampton, Virginia, um, and it was a, it evaded Union capture throughout the whole Civil War, but. After the war, it was the house for Jefferson Davis, which was the Confederate president. Every evening, he was escorted for a walk along the ramparts, where his wife would watch from a house nearby just to make sure that he was okay. I can see her peering through the window. Today, visitors report seeing Davis's ghost still strolling along there, which is what I would call a residual haunting. And you were talking about residual hauntings while we were getting ready to record residuals. So as I was doing some research for this podcast, I was noticing over the numerous videos that I was watching and the numerous things that would be different encounters, it just seemed to me that with all this tragedy that everything seemed to be like a residual haunting. It just history repeating itself over and over and over and over again. Right. And to me, I read something about residual hauntings, which kind of kind of speaks to me, actually. And so a residual haunting is one where, you know, you hear all the time, you know, Jefferson Davis walking across the same rampart at the same time every day. Right. Or the woman strolling along the beach searching for her shipwrecked husband every third Tuesday of the month at the full moon. And the way I heard it described once was we don't know how time works and could time be ripples in space and as you know the earth rotates you know just on its own axis or rotates around the sun you know are we just re revisiting that time but in an echo or in a shadow 
and that's how residual hauntings could be described. And I thought, I could buy that. Hmm. Where does time go theory. when it's done? Yeah. Right? Is it, does it just, sorry, does it just poof? Oh, there it is. The word of the day. Poof. poof. Does it just poof out into <laughs> the space and then we revisit it? I, I don't know. know. What do you think, Doc? Yeah. I don't know, but I have a goal not to be a working ghost. That's that's what we decided. Life goal. That's it. I don't want to be residual sitting in the hospital. Well, you could be like residual on vacation. That's what we were talking about. Retiree ghost is like better. Like ice but... cream. You know, every Tuesday at midnight, Doc's goes goes into the ice cream shop right. and gets a scoop of pistachio. There you go. I mean, I guess my thought is, you know, with residual energy, the theory would be that what you put a lot of your time or effort or significant events in your life, you know, may reverberate throughout time and space, I guess you could say. Your intent? Yeah. I mean, really, I mean, if you had, it could be a traumatic thing as well. A lot of these residuals, a lot of people say, oh, it's because they passed suddenly and they didn't know or whatever. I guess maybe not so much with residuals, more with ghosts that are still around, but what you commit your time and efforts to in this life possibly lingers. And it could be some of these residual ghosts. If you die in battle or die in something very heavily emotional, that might be just where you stick whether you want it or not. Mm. So, right. All right, let's talk about Gettysburg. That's the big one. All right. So you had the horse at Gettysburg. I did. Apparently Jefferson Davis's ghost is also at Gettysburg. Seems like his ghost was everywhere, which kind of lends me to believe that maybe some of these Jefferson Davis ghosts are... Someone else. Someone else, or yeah, everyone's just so excited that there's a ghost somewhere that it's Jefferson Davis, because he's one of the big Confederates, right? But apparently he has been seen. But there's a place in Gettysburg called Devil's Den. Did you get to see that while you were there, Doc? Uh, it sounds familiar, but I do not recall. Apparently it's the place that ghosts seem to gather the most is at Devil's Den, and it's on the second day of the Battle of Gettysburg. It's a kind of a craggy outcropping, and it's where some of the most vicious battles at Gettysburg were, was just right there, and it says they had about 51,000 casualties just there, and I saw pictures of it, and it's not a very big area. Right. They have said that hunters have gotten lost. There's kind of a boulder maze there, and they've had um, a soldier that will come and kind of direct them out, which that would not be residual. That would be that would be no. intelligent haunting, which we'll right. talk about types of hauntings at some point. Yeah. There's a hippie-like man that's been described asking people if they need help, and a lot of people that have seen him and kind of are in the know, because a lot of people that go to Gettysburg are going to be Civil War enthusiasts, and they say that he's a soldier from Texas because Texas was as far away as you could about get at the time, as far as outposts. And a lot of the soldiers there didn't get the shoes and, and clothes like the, the people closer. And so they would just kind of come on whatever they had. And so they looked a little scruffy. Another appears to have a gigantic chest wound. And there's been one woman ghost who sits, who claims to have been grabbed by a soldier and then the ghost rider who disappears into thin air, which is the one that you saw. I also have heard of the headless horseman, but not only was he headless, but so was the horse. And that was one of the stories I ran across in Gettysburg. Again, Jefferson Davis stories. Um, there's also the sound of hoofbeats, the sound of gunfire, you know, your typical mists, orbs, stuff like that. There's a little girl that calls for her cat, Greta. And they've also seen the cat in form. There's also a lady in white who appears on a boardwalk. And she's thought to be the wife of a ship captain who murdered her when he caught her having an affair. I don't know. Oh. It's not a Civil War ghost, but it's like, hey, go hang out with all the other ghosts. All right, sure. A lot of men around there, I hear. Yes. <laughs> and that is actually one of the things that they say. They say, since it's, you know, so many people died at Gettysburg, there's a lot of men, a lot of young men, a lot of people that are walking around the town of Gettysburg will feel, you know, hands, kind of, you know, stroke their cheek or tuck their hair behind their ear. Um, you know, like they're saying, hey, hot stuff. You know. Right. Mm -hmm. I don't think ghost men and ghost women can have ghost babies, though. But... 
Do like, you really know? I I. I wonder if they tried. Personally, no. <laughs> <laughs> so around Gettysburg, there's also a National Soldiers Orphanage Homestead. It was founded in 1866 because so many people, you know, were killed in the war. The headmistress there, her name was Rosa Carmichael. As if these children didn't have a hard enough time anyway, she beat the heck out of them. I had a feeling you were going to say something like uh -huh. that. Um, she would starve them, beat them, she'd confine them in the pit as a punishment. And there's a, a ghost tour lady there. But there's a lot of ghost tours there, strangely enough. And she says something very dark resides in that pit, and she won't even go in there. And I thought, yeah. And I, I mean, I'm not making fun of the lady, but yeah, you know, you got everything, all the bad juju going on from the war, and then you're an orphan, and then the headmistress beats you and confines you in the basement as a child. Yeah, there's going to be some definite bad stuff going on down there. Yeah. Negative energy, for sure. Yeah. Uh -huh. Aw, that's a sad story. That's yeah, really sad. There are a lot of Civil War ghost stories. Holy cow. There's a, there's a ton. And there's there's several that I'm skipping through because it's more of the same. You know, just a lot of... The same thing over and over. Just in just different, different places, places. And, and yeah. you know, different people hearing them. I would say, exactly. in terms of ghost videos that I've watched, one of the more compelling ones came from Gettysburg as well. Uh, it was a video of basically seeing a bunch of infantry marching... <laughs> up a trail and you could kind of see them pretty well full body or at least you know you could see they're mostly up yeah and and as they were walking through the trees they'd gradually kind of fade out and there were multiple times that this happened on this video that i saw and i thought it's one of the more compelling videos i've seen for paranormal evidence yeah, that's cool i'll have to see if i can find it i have seen a couple full body apparitions and some some mists that yeah, it's like it's almost the people. Because like at the Benson Grist Mill, there's the lady in white. I've seen her. But to see like a whole group or a whole yeah, battalion, and, that would be awesome. And it was very orderly and very organized. And you'd watch one go and then it would kind of fade out. And the next one would come and fade out. See, and that again sounds like it could be residual. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, you know, just seeing an echo in time. So here's another one that's kind of interesting. There was a group that they were kind of marching north. They paused beside a creek. And Union troops would hit here to evade capture because Confederate occupied this town. And I didn't write down what town. But the, the Confederates occupied this town at one point. So they were hiding. And a rainstorm came in and flooded the banks next to the creek that they were by. And so a lot of soldiers drowned. It's kind of sad because they said later they could see scratches and tooth marks under the bridge because they were so desperate to not be drug away with this rainstorm and, and this flood that came through that they were just clawing at, at this bridge with everything they had to try to not get swept down. It says that locals, even to this day, won't stand on the storm drains because they actually feel fingers coming up through the grates and grabbing their feet. And so locals won't stand on the, on the grates in town. Which, that's then, another terribly sad story, isn't it? Like you didn't die in the war. I mean, be, you know, like from a bullet or a, or a cannon or anything. Right. But terrified yeah. and drowning. Yeah. Instead. And swept down, swept down oh, the river. That's but terrible. then there's me. I'm thinking I gotta look up this town and go stand on a great. Because I want to go stand there and see if it's going to pull down on me, right? I just want to see if ghost fingers are going to reach up and grab my toe. Yeah. I'm gonna stand on it barefoot. So let's go. All right. We're on it. See ya. <laughs> and then there's the Lone Sentinel, but it's a phantom soldier with a lantern and a rifle. They can sometimes be seen gazing north. And I think if, if you've watched Ghost Adventures, and I might be getting two Ghost Adventures episodes mixed up, but I think they do go to Gettysburg, and I think they may have gotten like some thermal, camage, thermal camera mm -hmm. imaging of this. Yeah, of this ghost. I think I've seen one of those episodes. Yeah, you sound about as excited as I do about Yeah, I, I, I don't like to give them much props. No, but if you like that show, go yeah. look at it. I think the one that they claim to find in their thermal camera is this one. But if you'd subscribe to our YouTube channel, you could promote us enough that we could go do that and you could watch us instead. Yes. 
two more <laughs> quick stories that I really like. In the 1980s, some college administrators left together. They, they'd worked late, got in the elevator, and they wanted to go to the first floor. But when the elevator opened, they were in the basement. When it opened up, there was just a real grisly Civil War era scene. There was bleeding patients, there were orderlies running around, surgeons preparing to saw off arms. I mean, you know, just like they'd walked in on battle surgery. Triage. And, you know, you know, they, you know, they're freaking out. They finally get up to the lobby, ran to the security guard for help. But when they got back down there, nothing. It was just, you know, the basement like it always was. They just walked in on it and it kind of freaked them out. I think my favorite of the haunted buildings, areas, ghost stories is the Jenny Wade house story. Have you guys, have you heard this one? I haven't. Jenny Wade was in a home. It wasn't her home, even though they call it the Jenny Wade house. It was actually her sister's home. She was the only civilian in a town of 2,400 residents to die in a battle. And she was actually in the kitchen making bread for the Union troops in her kitchen. And she was struck by a stray bullet that penetrated not one, but two doors. Um, yeah, just in, in her house, just do, 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 you know, wrong place, wrong outside. Time. Mm -hmm. Boom, gone. I have seen a show, and I don't know if it was a documentary. I don't remember, because it's been a while ago. I don't remember if it was a ghost hunting show. But I, st I think you can still see where the bullet went. I think the bullet holes are still on the doors. I mean, that's just sad. That is terribly sad. You know, you're just in a home, in your house, thinking that you're... Baking some bread. Baking some bread, thinking that the war will be over in a week or two, and boom, you're gone. At least she didn't suffer. Yes. Um, you know, she's purported to... You can hear her in a rocking chair. You can hear her... I mean, there's every story. I would like to go and investigate that house person. Yeah. That's where I would like to go. Is that on your bucket list? Perfect. My bucket list is about five miles. That was pretty long. You've been listening to the Supernatural Hour at AdvancedParanormal.com. The Supernatural Hour is part of the Radio Ronin Network found at RadioRonin.com. Copyright 2021 by Advanced Paranormal Services.